we're going to kick off this particular demo with a little bit of brush mixing in monochrome. And we're going to use our bone black or Mars black cadmium red light or cadmium red pale and titanium white. And that's going to give us the opportunity to do some warm cool shifts and to begin really getting into some subtleties of painting, working into half tones, and really going for a full, um, a fully realized painted sketch. This is a really fun way to start a painting, and it involves basically building off of the noton that we did uh, the previous week. So we have the just the black areas laid out with paint on them you know the white is the white of the paper so now we just go back into the shadow side that we've established and we start to bump up the sophistication you can see in the reference photo that these areas that i'm working on are kind of this dark red orange um, metal primer color and since we're working in monochrome we can almost mix that exact color and we can push it and exaggerate it a little bit further um, for now and we can come back and change it later. The point here is to begin developing a little bit of the color range but to still be clear about what's in light and what's in dark. Our sort of minimum requirements for this are just to make sure that everything is communicated clearly. So here the corrugated metal is kind of a gray, so I can basically take a simple black and white and start making a, a darkish gray to get this corrugated um, metal, corrugated steel. Look, it looks galvanized. Get that idea across. Um, and I can go under these areas with more shadow that's in the corrugated steel and begin to work in to some of the details that I didn't get in the original Noton. So, um, rather than using a pure gray for these light areas, I wanted to add a little bit of warmth into it with a little bit of red into this corrugated metal. Even though it's not there in the reference photo, I know that that light is going to add warmth. And the only way to do that with a monochrome with black, white, and red is to add red. I could do it with yellow if I were using a yellow or a full palette, but here it makes more sense to use that red. And since, um, uh, since I do want to get that across, I, I do want to warm up that light. I can get away with a fair amount uh, of red in there. And I can always come back and I can lighten or darken the color as needed. But here's just a, uh, a way to get things established. So the ground shadow here isn't that dark of a ground shadow. It's not black. When you work with a noton, you just push everything to black. Um, so here I'm coming back and I'm lifting that black up, making it a little bit lighter, getting into like the 70% range of the gray. And that's important because when you go to full black or full white, you lose all color. And, um, you know, lifting stuff, pushing stuff towards the middle allows you to introduce a lot more color into the painting. And when you work in sort of a graphic style like this where things are very hard edged, um, you can get away with very subtle, subtle distinctions. And I'm still being loose here. And I'm not being um, very... Um, tight or taking too much time on edges. Edges do get important uh, later on, but the thing here is I haven't even covered the, can <laughs> the canvas or the paper rather yet. So that's kind of your primary objective in sort of layer two um, or really full layer one is, is actually literally just to cover the canvas and, and that's like 90% of your initial goal. Uh, once you have the canvas covered, you can begin making further distinctions. And that's going to get easier to do once you have something to compare it to. So here I'm working on the light side of this engine. And I've used kind of a little bit of gray, a light gray with a little bit of red. And now I'm using much more red in there. And going on fairly thin, 
Um, it's more or less, it's pretty close to a full strength red, but thinned out so you see a little bit of the white of the paper coming through. So um, this is just to establish kind of a baseline of what a, where the boundary condition is. So if I use like the full black, the full white, and the full red, then I kind of know how much room I have to work in between all of those. And here I can actually get a transition value by painting a little transparently from the red into the black. And I'm using brush strokes that follow the form rather than going straight up or straight across. Um, these kind of arc around the curvature that I've established. The next stage here is to go into the shadow side of this engine housing and lift out of the black. And essentially I'm using a very similar value as the ground shadow, but I've introduced more red into it so that it still in the end is gonna look like a red object. That's the convenient thing about the way the brain works is this is gonna look like a bright red, red engine housing in the end, even though I have other colors introduced into it and it's not pure bright red. Um, so now I've got room to pull in more reflected light off of the bottom. You can see in the reference photo that there's this bright, almost white reflection in there. And I can use additional color and lighten up the value to kind of bump up the sense of reflected light. And I'm not being super accurate to the reference. I know that basically this is just a mixture of a cone and a cylinder. So I want to get that across first. I can then come back in subsequent layers and get very specific and render as much of this as I want. But for now, I think it's okay to establish the fact that it's basically cylindrical and go from there. And in terms of mixing here, I'm just doing a lot of brush mixing um, because I want the colors to relate to each other and I want them to get close and similar. If I wanted distinct clean colors, I would have to get the palette knife out and mix with the palette knife. Um, but that can take up a lot of time and be very fussy. So when you're learning, when you're practicing, I think brush mix mixing is great. Um, and you know, I know a lot of plain air painters will brush mix um, as they work um, and then clean off the brush a little bit or get a new brush or have like different brushes for different color ranges and so on. Um, I'm a fan of using one brush for everything and uh, it just makes it easier in a lot of ways and, and um, but it is kind of, it does have the disadvantage of being like a little messy and a, and a little more loose. Um, but that can introduce a lot of character into it as well. So here I'm going around into the shadow side again and pulling that up, making it a lot lighter. Um, this is probably too light of an overall value. I may want to come back and change that later and uh, get a little bit of a transition. Notice there's a little bit of red in the gray, but it's mostly headed towards that, that pure gray. And um, on this front area, I need to lighten that up um, and tone it and like tone down the saturation. So there's gonna be some red there, but largely it's gonna be gray. I need a value differentiation between the main part of it and the inside part of it. And they're coming back in with that dark. Um, the nice thing about painting wet and wet is you can, um, sometimes you can get like a pure pigment in there and, and really just like go in there while the paint's still wet and it'll mix on the actual paper. And that can create a nice effect. Um, so I don't want to use like the same value and color all the way around the edge of this. So varying it up a little bit each time I think is, is kind of nice because it gives you a little more variety and variety is more interesting. Um, as long as the shape reads, it should be okay. So here a gray, but not like completely gray because it is sort of a warm gray in the reference photo. Um, I would actually probably approach this with a green um, or like a yellow green, very desaturated uh, if I were using a full palette. 
but I don't have that option in monochrome, so I do a little bit of a warm gray. Um, and I could probably work this shadow shape just a little bit better. It's um, because I'm eliminating that, that plate tag thing in the reference photo. Um, it's a little hard to see what the tail end of that shadow shape is. But um, uh, I, I probably would rather have it curve. Um, but for now, I still haven't covered the paper, so I don't need to be fussing with those kinds of things. Up in the top left corner, you have this shape that's kind of white, but is warm. So a near white with a little bit of red is going to be the perfect thing to pull into that shape. And at this point, I'm really focusing on composition anyway. So I don't care what the object is. I just know that I need that, that shape there to make things more interesting. And I can vary that just a little bit in, this, in the next parallel shape, make it a little lighter, um, do something different. One of the interesting things about painting is that um, if you take a long time with a painting, you can do all these little subtle things where um, the paint it gets the paint colors just get a little bit different each time you go back to the same type of area, right? So if I were going to spend a month on this little painting, um, I would want to be sure that my value range is locked in and that I don't lose the sense of the noton. But every time I go to one of these vertical strips of the corrugated uh, steel, I would want to vary the color just a little bit so that I can see the progression of light as it goes across the uh, across the page here. Um, knowing that I could do that, I can kind of short circuit that a little bit and shorten the time length and do a little bit of brush mix mixing. Every time I go back, pick a slightly different color, but that's sort of related. Um, that's a more sophisticated approach to it. And you can put that in your back pocket if you're not ready for that. Right now, we're really just focusing on value and shape and keeping in with that noton. So one of the nice things about having this noton established is that you can do almost anything in the light areas as long as you stay light and keep the shape. You've already defined the shape. You've already defined what's light and what's dark. So at this point, there you kind of can't go wrong. Um, one of the things that I would pay attention to is just very subtly running over the edges um, when you approach the edge of one color. Um, what's convenient about putting the light over the dark like that is that you can still see where the edge of the dark is. And when you come back and redo the darks, you'll know where to where to finish out the darks. Um, so here I'm putting in the ground and I've got kind of this very pale pink color um, because it is in the light and I want it to warm up. So I choose a warmer um, a version of this of this light pink and again you want to paint over some of those some of those edges and you can see that it's kind of loose the edges are soft um, I think it's much easier to clean up a soft edge than it is to soften a hard edge um, so that's kind of why I default to that sort of mode of working and here I'm not really interested in what this object is behind this uh, engine housing. It's another engine housing, I'm sure. What I'm looking for are the shapes and texture that kind of give it enough variety, make it interesting to look at, and allow me to put the focus where it belongs, which is on the main subject, which is this particular engine housing. So I eliminated a lot of detail and texture and just kind of gave everything an overall middle value. It's not real bright, it's not real dark. Um, that, that way, this object kind of operates as a compositional shape more than as an object. And I think that's an interesting thing to keep in your head that when you're painting, you're only working with shapes. You're working with various shapes of different values and colors. And it never is anything more than that. And it can be difficult if you're not getting the shapes that you want. Um, but if you keep coming back to, you know, I'm just working on shapes, those shapes have an edge quality, a value, and color, you'll always be able to break things down and to simplify it 
in ways that you need to be able to simplify it. So here I've basically got the, the paper covered. So my main goal is accomplished. Now that I've got the paper covered, I can begin to do some interesting things and to make some changes, right? I still haven't covered over all of the black, so I may need to go back in there and lift up some shadows. Um, the value difference in that ground shadow there is way too big, so I need to lift that up and kind of match the value that I had in the in that background gray that I laid down sort of near the beginning. Um, and if I can get a little bit of transition from light to dark as I go towards this back wall, then when I hit the wall, I need to kind of change colors a little bit um, to be sure that I get a differentiation between the floor and the wall. And that concept is actually really useful to me lately, um, the idea of differentiation. Well, all I'm trying to do is differentiate one shape from another, and I have a couple of ways to do that. I basically have color and value differentiation. And I can change line direction or direction of the shape, but those are my two. And as long as I change color or value, um, that's going to help me redefine the shape and, and work through this image. And having basically those that one concept that you're thinking about is really powerful because you don't have to focus on more than that. Um, especially now that you have the shapes established from the noton, you can just say, well, all right, I've got the shapes themselves established, so now I need to differentiate within those shapes. And to me, that's that's really nice because I can just say, okay, well, what I just put down was this this color or this value. Now I just need to differentiate. And um, if you go in and you don't have enough differentiation, you can immediately come back and change it like I did here. So I saw that I had this opportunity to get more red in the shadow, warm the shadow up. As you can even see in the reference photo in the cast shadow, there's a lot of red in there um, because uh, what's happening is like, yes, the light is reflecting into the shadow side of the object, but the object is reflecting red into the shadow on the ground. So I can include that as well. It's a really interesting phenomenon. Every, every object that gets light is also a light source. And that's kind of a funny phenomenon that we'll explore more later. But for now, we're just focusing on shape, value, and differentiation. So sometimes value differentiation uh, works really well, and other times it doesn't, and you need that color. Um, I think a lot of painters really love who really love color um, would prefer to differentiate shapes with different colors rather than values. Um, in a traditional like sense of what's important in painting, like the most important thing is is going to be shape. You know, if you get the shapes right, everything falls into place. After that, you have value, right? Value is really important. And here, I'm bumping up that value of this front edge to kind of make that front edge pull forward. Um, and color is something that's important after that. So color is kind of like number three in the hierarchy. Um, and beyond that, you have other things that are that can make a painting really interesting, like texture and you know the um, the expressiveness with which you um, go in into it, the um, the less tangible part of the technique. That's all interesting stuff, but it's subordinate to shape, value, and color. Um, and the interesting thing is too, is if you get the shapes right and you get the values right, you can put really any color in there. It's called arbitrary color and tons of painters have done that in the past. And it will still allow you to, to read objects really well. Like now that I have this shape there, I could put like greens and I could put oranges, I could put yellows and blues into this object. And it would still read as, as this object, as long as I'm sticking to the shape and the value scheme that I've already set up. Um, so here, uh, I have the opportunity now to start really bumping up that red, right? Um, because I've, I've gotten the, everything covered. I can go in and I can start pushing 
what I've already established into a more readable and more interesting place. So sometimes you might have to take a break and um, remix some colors, and that's fine too. Um, I realized that I hadn't even painted this one shape here that kind of actually breaks things up really nicely in the background because that little object kind of crosses the crossbar and goes up into the um, lighter area at the top. And it's just such a good defining shape. Um, I think it's good to throw that in there um, just to be sure. And I think it was too dark. So I think it was worth coming back in with a lighter element and adding that, adding that in loosely. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes that you can make early on is to like draw this out really carefully, section it out, and then kind of paint like section by section. I think it's more interesting and you learn a lot more about the medium and the shapes if you paint a little loosely and are comfortable with going over edges. Um, so this isn't as direct of an approach. Um, things will look really loose and really messy for a while. And then what you'll notice is that as you go further along and you're, you're focusing on these simple concepts, you're focusing on differentiation, shape, and value, and color, that eventually you'll reach a point in the painting where everything in one moment, maybe one or two within the space of one or two brush strokes, all clicks into place. And it looks really well defined. It looks, it looks beautiful. There's some stuff that you might want to tweak about it, but overall you're getting everything across that you need to get across. Like the essentials are there and everything's kind of working for you. Um, and that comes through a process of saying, saying to yourself, well, you know, now that I've got everything down, I can evaluate. So one of the things that I noticed was that shape, um, upon further evaluation was too dark. So coming in with a little bit of a lighter value um, helps a lot uh, to define and create differentiation between all of the shapes surrounding it. And then I realized that I hadn't gone through and finished up covering all of the absolute black of the noton. So um, I think that's an essential because that's gonna help, re help finishing with the finishing of the the value range and then establish the value range. So this is kind of a warm uh, middle to dark gray that I'm going in with. I needed a darker one for that shape on the uh, engine behind this one um, because it is a very dark, um, dark value behind there. And that dark value actually f serves to push the, uh, the engine housing forward the object that we're actually uh, like working on and then this uh, beam behind there has a pretty bright orange going to it and the crossbars are pretty bright as well the reference cuts off that crossbar but i think we can safely assume that that's roughly what it looks like even though it's getting cut off from the photograph and then we can add some of that dark red as the shadow and kind of put the underside of the of those beams in there we can warm up some of these some of these shadows because we would be getting some reflected light in there um, and start to balance this out by using some of the same colors uh, in different areas of this of this painting um, you know you could go on for a very long time and just making tweaks like this and adjusting colors and, and making adjustments. But what I want you to focus on is how to be good at starting a painting. You know, being able to look at a painting, analyze it, go through the fundamentals of shape, value, color, and being able to readily differentiate all of those and get them in a range where your object reads properly. That's our main goal. And that's really what I want you to focus hard on and work hard on. Um, so that'll be about it for this particular demo. And we'll do more in a little bit.